All right. Uh, so Philip asks, uh, much of sports science studies are conducted on young males. Are there any studies uh, or areas in particular that we would have reason to think female physiology would give different results? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, and I, I'm not totally... In terms of in terms of the physiology thing, I mean, I think the the biggest thing to consider um, is that uh, certain certain supplements and just certain chemical compounds, uh, uh, sex hormones, and in particular estrogen, can affect how they're metabolized and the rate at which they're metabolized. And I know we've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, but, but kind of the poster child for that is, uh, caffeine. So, uh, the rate at which, uh, women metabolize caffeine, uh, varies based on where they're at in their menstrual cycle and might vary between, uh, women using versus not using hormonal contraception. So, um, on, on a physiological level, I mean, anything that might be interacting with sex hormones or where sex hormones might interact with the rate at which certain compounds are metabolized. Uh, I think those would be the, the places to look if you're asking about this purely from a physi physiology uh, basis. Personally, though, uh, I'm going to answer this question just, you know, what, what areas are there a, quite, is there quite a bit of research on males where I'd like to see more research on females? Um, and the first thing that comes to mind, which uh, generally wouldn't be the first thing that would come to mind for me, uh, cause I generally don't care about them, uh, is, uh, supplements, a lot of supplement research. Uh, there's a lot of studies on males, not that many on females. Uh, caffeine used to be one actually where, uh, like 98% of the research was, was on male subjects. Uh, and I think we talked about this maybe two episodes ago, but within the last two years, there's, there's been a, uh, a renaissance, you know, I can't call it a renaissance, that's a rebirth. There's been an initial zance of uh, exercise caffeine research in women. So that, that's good to see. But yeah, a, a lot of supplements, uh, bodies of research lean very heavily towards male subjects. So I'd, I'd like to see uh, more female supplement studies. Um, one area where I'm particularly interested uh, in, in like muscle type outcomes in women, uh, is, uh, blood flow restriction research. A lot of that stuff leans pretty heavily, uh, towards the male side of things. And there have been some initial studies suggesting that maybe blood flow restriction is, uh, it, it has a, it might have a slightly smaller anabolic effect in, uh, females muscles than males muscles. Um, but again, we, we need to see some more research before I could say that uh, pretty confidently. But that's that's an area where I'd like to see more research on women. Um, and I think the last one is I'd like to see more uh, more studies comparing high load and low load training in uh, in women. Uh, for a long time, there there were a dozen studies in men and there was a 2012 paper by Schwenke uh, that was the only high load, low load study in women. Uh, since then, I think there have been either two or three more studies, um, that, that have found results that are similar to the research on men, uh, in that high load and low load training seem to have, uh, fairly similar effects on hypertrophy. Uh, the Schwenke study though, did find that high load training was way, way more effective than low load training for hypertrophy in women. Uh, and there, there hasn't been like a major result like that on the male side of things. Uh, so I, I would want to see, I think another probably two or three high load, low load, uh, hypertrophy studies, uh, in women. Uh, and, and actually there's one more I'd like to see, uh, more volume studies in women as well. Like the impact of, training volume on hypertrophy and strength gains. Most of, most of that research, uh, uses male subjects or predominantly male subjects. Um, and there's some reason to believe that, uh, women both maybe can tolerate higher levels of training volume within a single session, like recovering better set to set. 
maybe recovering a little bit better uh, between resistance training sessions than males do. Um, so there's some reason to believe that the optimal training volume for women might be a little bit higher than the optimal training volume for men. So I'd like to see uh, more volume studies on women uh, in individually, but then also um, comparing the effects of various levels of training volume uh, in both males and females within this, within the context of the same study to see if kind of that optimal level of volume, um, seems to on average differ between sexes. I, I suspect it does, but there's, there's not enough research, uh, currently to say for sure. Good stuff. Do you, do you have any that you'd like to see? Um, mm. Nothing that really comes to mind. Like, I feel like you already mentioned it, but with the supplement research, there's just so much that is male heavy. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it has, it, it's changing, you know, um, there are a lot of studies coming out that, um, you know, pretty explicitly are just like, yeah, we're testing this in, in female participants because we think we know about the supplement and we've never tried yeah um yeah we, we think we know the effects of this supplement but when we look at the extant literature we realize we only know the effects of this supplement in about 49 percent of the population <laughs> yeah um you know i i would be just like an interesting aspect of physiology i think is metabolic flexibility mm -hmm. um and given differences in substrate utilization i think it might be interesting to look at uh how different nutritional patterns could potentially influence uh, uh, metabolic flexibility in males versus females. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it would be particularly, uh, you know, actionable. You know, I don't think, I don't, I'm not certain that there'd be a high degree of practical application, uh, but I just think it's a fascinating concept. Yeah. Um, divergent, you know, I, I think it'd be interesting to look at, uh, you know, more research on sex differences, uh, in terms of different weight loss strategies, um, different dietary combinations. And, um, you know, much like people have kind of speculated that, you know, individuals who are more insulin resistant might do better on this diet versus that diet. I, I think the more that we continue to explore these kind of open research questions, the better, but there's, there's not like one, um, one particular topic where i'm mm -hmm. like that's that's what i'd like to see i gotcha yeah. oh uh th this this wouldn't necessarily be a males versus females thing uh but one one other area where i'd like to see more research in in women in particular uh is looking at the effects of uh menstrual cycle phase on recovery from resistance training there was a really cool paper by markovsky in 2014 that looked at this uh finding that recovery from like a pretty brutal eccentric exercise session uh, was was considerably quicker during the follicular phase of the cycle versus the luteal phase. And I think that there's been maybe one, maybe two other papers since then that have that have waded into those waters. But uh, man, there, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of research on uh, the impact of the menstrual cycle on acute exercise performance uh, across basically every conceivable domain of performance, uh, you know, aerobic capacity, uh, repeated sprint performance, maximum dynamic strength, maximum isometric strength, all types of stuff looking at uh, how different menstrual cycle phases affect various things. Turns out not all that much, uh, really. But um, th there hasn't been that much looking at the effects of menstrual cycle phases on recovery, which theoretically could have a, a notable impact um, because uh, sex hormones seem to influence recovery from uh, muscle damage in, in women quite a bit. Um, so estrogen tends to promote uh, like muscular healing and recovery uh, post-training. Um, you, you can see that uh, in women with different estrogen levels, you can see that when women go on hormone replacement therapy, um, like if they're postmenopausal, um, and I mean, just like kind of mechanistic cell culture research shows that as well. Uh, there was a good, a good review paper on that, I think from 2010 by ENS and colleagues, E-N-N-S. 
Um, but yeah, so theoretically with, with fluctuating estrogen levels, uh, throughout the menstrual cycle, you could conceivably predict, uh, different rates of, of recovery from resistance training. And like I said, that Markovsky study suggests that it might have a, have a relatively large impact. Um, but yeah, I, I want to see more follow-up work in that area uh, before stating that with with a super high degree of confidence. So that's that's another area where where I definitely like to see more research.